thirsties, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the last video. Um, this week we're going to make these super easy Rice Krispie Treat squares. Um, and we're going to use a mould for these. It makes it really, really easy. Instead of dipping and making a mess, we're just going to use a mould like we do for a lot of the other items that I make on my page. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe and click that notification button so that you get all the notifications when I upload new videos. So what we're going to do is I'm going to use my custom blend of sprinkles, which I'll link all of the components for in the description for you. Everything I use will be linked or as close as I can get it on Amazon for you. So let's get into this one. I'm going to show you what I think you'll need at the beginning. I always mess this up because I do it before I start instead of doing it at the end when, when I should do it. So I'm going to show you what I think I'm going to use. And then there's definitely going to be something that I've forgotten. I'm really sorry. So we're going to use our square mould. Um, this is quite, it feels quite flimsy in your hand, but actually it made perfect little oblongs. Um, so it's really, really good. So we're going to use that and we're going to make sure we clean it out before we use it as well when we come to use it. Um, this is my little sprinkle blend that I make myself. Yes, I am wearing my rings. I don't take them off when I'm only making videos. Um, and that's all I did for today. I didn't sell these on or anything like that. They weren't for a client. We've got our angled spatula. We've got a brush that's probably seen better days and a big ended acrylic ball tool. Um, it is for flower making, but it works really well for spreading chocolate. We've got some rejuvenator spirit, some luster dust for making a gold paint. You can also just use premixed. I'll link both for you. A full pack of candy buttons. Um, yep, we don't use real chocolate here because real white chocolate is not a thing white chocolate isn't chocolate so we use candy melts because they're ready tempered and i'm lazy uh, and i don't want to temper chocolate it's rubbish um i'm using this little non-stick board and i also use like a a little work board as well i've got my metal bowl for melting my chocolate i do melt my chocolate in a double boiler on the hob not in the microwave um, and I'll show you how I do that as well. So we're going to start out by cleaning our moulds. Now I'm using a clear alcohol, but if you don't want to use an alcohol you can use lemon juice or white vinegar. Just make sure it's fully dried before you start using the moulds. And I'm just using a piece of kitchen paper. Um, it doesn't leave any fibres or anything behind. Like I said before, I've got my watch and my rings on because I only made these to make this video. If I was doing it for a client I would take all of those off. So here's our double boiler. We've got some water in the bottom. It doesn't touch the bottom of the bowl, which I'm showing you here. Um, you need to make sure that it doesn't touch the bottom of the bowl. Empty our full pack of candy melts in. And then we're going to put that on a medium temperature, low to medium, not too high. Um, it takes a good five, maybe even 10 minutes on a low temp we don't want it high, we don't want to burn that chocolate and we don't want the water bubbling because you do not want that water to hit the bottom of that bowl because it will burn the chocolate and then it's ruined. And then you've got to start all over again or you've got to go back onto Amazon and order some more chocolate. <laughs> I am adding a little bit of Trex in. Um, if you're not in the UK, then it would be um, Crisco or any kind of vegetable fat. I like a solid vegetable fat. Um, I wouldn't use a margarine or anything like that, or a butter. It does need to be like a vegetable fat. Um, I'm just loosening it up. The PME melts that I'm using here can be a little bit firm. And I just want to loosen it up a little bit. Not loads. I don't want to make it really, really runny. Um, different brands come out differently. And to be honest, even the same brand used twice in a row doesn't always melt the same. I uh, don't know why. It just doesn't. So... Um, sometimes you need to add a bit in, sometimes you don't. And I'm just keeping working it round so that it doesn't stick to the bottom and we don't get hot patches. Okay, and then we're going to take it off and we're going to pop it on our workspace saver, a little like silicone mat. And we're going to pop our colours in. Now I'm using colour mill colours because these are fat dispersible colours and they bind to the fats and they don't they don't cause chocolate to seize, so they're perfectly safe and you can use them in buttercream, everything like that. You just can't use them in macarons because there's no fat for them to bind to. Okay, we're not fully mixing those colours in because we're going for a marbled effect. This is the super oop, super ooper. The super ooper, I'm making up words now for you, don't you just love me for that? Um, the super easy way of doing a marble instead of colouring the chocolate separately, but you just have to be really careful not to mix it all together. 
So if you're doing the colours separately, it's easier in terms of you don't end up with the colours mixed together because they're always kept separate. But obviously you've got to mess about using separate bowls and mixing them together in the mould, which can be a little bit more difficult. So doing it this way, it does make it easier, especially if you're a beginner. And these are definitely well suited for a beginner. You just need to get these few little tools. And what we're doing is when we're mixing the chocolate into the corners, we're making sure we get it right in those corners because they are obviously a solid angle. They're not smooth and they're not, there's no curve on the angles in this mold. So you need to make sure you get those corners and those edges, but we're trying not to mix it too much. So where I'm mixing it and pushing it into the corners, I'm trying not to push on the bottom of the mold. So we're just smoothing the top layer of the chocolate up the sides and into those corners. And this again is where we don't want that chocolate too runny because that's going to cause it to slip. Obviously, gravity is going to work against us on those corners and on those sides. And it's going to end up all in the bottom and you're going to have weak sides. I will show you how we shore up the sides shortly as well. Um, once we've done this, we're going to pop them into the fridge for about 15 minutes. We want them to be quite firm and set but we don't want them to be freezing cold um, we're also going to pop our spatula across the top just to make sure that we've got nice neat sides there we go and i do keep my spatula in a pot of warm water just because that that works really well with chocolate but just make sure that you are wiping it first or you'll cause your chocolate to seize if you get water into it okay so then we're going to pop it into the fridge and when we bring it back out it should be nicely set be careful not to pull the mould away from the edges of the chocolate. You don't want to pull it away yet. Okay, so now it doesn't really matter if the chocolate's mixed together, which it has because I've had to remelt it. Um, Because we're just going to go around those sides now, shoring up those sides, making them nice and strong and giving a nice coating of chocolate. Make sure that we're not being um, stingy on those sides and popping them around the inside. You could do it with your spatula if you wanted to. Um, I just find a paintbrush easy to use. And as long as you rinse it out soon after you've used it with some nice warm water and some soapy suds, then it's absolutely fine. Um, and it doesn't ruin the brush or anything. To be honest, all my brushes probably need replacing apart from my zeros because I look after those really well. Um, and then again, we are wiping the top with our angled warm angled spatula. Again, always making sure that you wipe it before you use it on that chocolate because you don't want to cause it to seize. I'm not going to make you watch me paint the inside of four, so we'll speedy weedy this bit. Okay, so once we've done this bit, we'll pop it back in the fridge for another five minutes just to let that set. And now we're going to make our filling. Okay, so we've got 100 grams of marshmallows, 80 grams of Rice Krispies or Rice cereal and 25 grams of real butter. Okay, and we're just going to melt our butter with our marshmallows in the microwave for 30 seconds at a time <clears throat> until it's nice and melted. So here, I'm also using a bit of non-stick liquid. It's not the spray, it is the liquid because it's better for the environment. Um, it's also cheaper. We're just spraying, putting that on, we're not spraying it, we're put, painting it onto our spatula because it stops it sticking because this mixture gets so, so sticky. And that there is not done. Um, so that's not finished. We're going to pop that back in the microwave um, and melt it a little bit more. See, even with this non-stick stuff on, it's still sticking slightly. This spatula is great because it lifts up off the counter. I'll link that for you below as well. Okay, and now we're back with melting it a little bit more. Um, for some reason, I'm struggling to keep this in the middle of the frame. And this is fully melted now. We're just using the residual heat that's left in the marshmallows to fully melt it and complete that. And then we're gonna pop our Rice Krispie cereal in and that is gonna make our Rice Krispie treats. It's that easy, honestly. Um, you can pop some flavoring oils in there if you want to. Um, I haven't, but you can, uh, whichever you want. Caramel's quite nice. Um, you can pop in a bit of chocolate in there if you want to, a bit of golden syrup or corn syrup, you might call that in America. Um, golden syrup will make it softer, um, so it won't set quite as firm. That adds a it it adds quite a sweetness to it, but also does add another depth of flavour. It's quite nice, um, and obviously these are really easy if you need to cater for someone with like a gluten allergy, um, because you can easily just switch the cereal out for a gluten free version, and that's it. It's as easy as that. 
um, obviously being careful to follow all other guidance for allergies and such. Um, and obviously you could switch them out for vegan alternatives as well if you want to do that. I forgot to put the non-stick stuff on my knife so now I'm just in a mess. Okay, so now we've got that made up, we're going to pop it into our moulds that have come out of the fridge. Um, now I'm using some of the non-stick liquid on my hands to stop it sticking and I am wearing gloves as well. Um, just because it does stick to everything, it's so, so sticky. Um, if you've left it a bit too long and your mixture's firmed up a bit in the bowl, pop it back in the microwave for 10-15 seconds and it'll soon soften back up again. Now I'm going to show you um, two different ways of doing this. So this first one I'm going to slightly overfill, as in I'm not overfilling it over the top but I'm filling it right up to the top. And I'll show you the difference when we come to put the backs on these, why I don't recommend that. Um, you can also put sticks in these, by the way. Um, you can do it afterwards. I didn't. Um, and you just need to melt a little hole in the top and pop a stick in. Um, but you need to be really, really careful not to crack the chocolate. Um, I don't think they need sticks personally, but it is personal preference. Um, and obviously this mould doesn't allow for the sticks being put in while you're making them um but you could put them in afterwards if you really wanted to i'm just back filling a few little tiny spaces and things like that you could also make a hole in the middle of these and pop other fillings in like i say you can add the oils into the mixture as you make it as well you will probably need to keep putting the non-stick stuff on your hands as you go as well um or gloves or whatever you're wearing because it does just it pulls the non-stick off and it will stick to you again marshmallows are just crazy sticky I'm just just using the heel of my hand to smooth those backs down and feel, you can really feel the gaps then as well. And I'm using tiny little bits just to back fill the gaps and I did that on all of them. Um, and like I say, I'm going to show you the difference. You might now, once we come to fill the backs and you might need to remelt your chocolate, I leave my double boiler going on the um, hob for a while just to mean that I've got it ready to go. But obviously you can go again with it. So this first one you can see... That's the one I filled right to the top rather than leaving a little gap. You can see how knobbly bobbly, I would call it, um, it is on the back there. Not very neat and you don't get a full seal with the chocolate against the sides either. Um, so obviously these have got quite good shelf life but if you're not fully sealing those backs in then they're not going to be as good as they could be. Whereas you notice on those other three where I haven't done that, um, the backs are nice and smooth. So there, yeah, we're just using our warm spatula again to really get those backs nice and neat. And then we're going to pop these back in the fridge for another 10 to 15 minutes. Make sure those backs are really firmly set. Obviously, just double check them before you take them out. So now they're out, we're going to take them out of this mould. I'm going to do that nice and carefully. I'm just showing you here how you can see how that top one on the left there is really bumpy and the others are a lot smoother. So we're not going to just literally pop these straight out. We're just going to loosen the sides of the mould to pull it off you'll sort of feel it break away from the edge of the mold um, and that just makes it easier to get them out and um, means that we've got less chances of breaking something these are quite robust and they're quite easy to get out because of the shape and there's no stick to get around either so i'm trying to show you the patterns there without the ring light getting in the way um it, i wasn't very successful um i think i've changed positions here for you to see if that helped um, so you go, oh no, more ring light, sorry. Um, but look at the marbling on that, it's so pretty. Um, these are really, really easy to loosen out of the mould, unlike cake schools. If you've watched my other videos, you'll know cake schools are a bit of a pain. I've got a cake school video that I'm working on for you at the minute as well. Um, and there's a little boo-boo in that one, it just reminded me. And I left it in for you because I thought it's important to show. Um, but oh, look at the marbling on that one, it's so I loved how these came out. They were so cute. Um, and like I said, they um really are so, so easy for people. If you're just starting out, these are, are really easy to start with. Like I say, they're quite robust. And um, there's very few places to go wrong and not massive knowledge techniques that you need for them or anything like that. Um, so yeah, quite simple ones. You could also fill them with cake or something like that, but just beware that it will make them slightly harder to handle. Okay, so we're making up some edible paint now. You can use a ready-use paint, ready-mix paint. I'll link both for you. 
um, just so you can make the choice. I like to make my own because I've got control over the consistency then. I'm making a mid paint. It's not dead loose. It's not really thick. Okay, and then we're using a brush just to splatter it on. I don't like to, I see some where they prick the brush. I don't like that. I don't know why. I like to tap the brush. I feel like you've got more control over it that way. Um, so we're just tapping the splatter, as I always call it, onto our, what look like bricks, essentially. Um, our little Rice Krispie Treats, just tapping the splatter on. Um, super simple decor on these as well. Um, nothing too fancy or anything like that. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to leave two of them just plain with their beautiful marble and the splatter. And then we're going to finish the other two with our sprinkles and a little bit of chocolate. So I'm just going to show you this up close. Look how pretty that is. Just with that little bit of splatter. So simple to make. Um, I love these. I will say though, those four bars took almost an entire package of candy melts so just beware that they do use a lot of chocolate if you're pricing them up for clients and things like that um so i've popped these two onto a piece of grease proof sheet that just makes it easier and we've got our leftover chocolate that's all that's left from that whole packet um so i'm adding some additional color into this to make it a bit darker so we get a nice contrast against the colour that's already there and we're using our small um, disposable piping bag as well and I just pop it inside a glass because it makes it easier to fill up then like this. Here's the one I prepared earlier and wiping the edge there and then we're just going to snip a tiny hole in the bottom of that and we're going to use it to go across the tops of these little crispy treats and then we're going to use our custom sprinkles to pop on the top there. So I always test it on the grease proof before I go onto it in case I've cut the top too uh, big or too small. Um, just to make sure that I've got it just right, all Goldilocks and such. And then we're popping our sprinkles on and they should stick. If you're not confident or you're not quick enough yet, make sure you only do one at a time. Um, if you're a bit slower or you want a bit more time to put your sprinkles on because candy melts do set really, really fast. So do one at a time if you know, you're a beginner or you just don't work quite as fast. Don't do them all at once because then they'll have dried and you won't be able to stick your sprinkles to them. This tray that I'm holding, you're supposed to actually sprinkle the sprinkles over the top of the tray so that you don't lose any. So, you know, I'm not actually using it for its purpose. Um, I don't know if you can get them on Amazon, but if you can, I will link them for you totally. I like to go back at the end and just pop any like larger pieces on because they don't tend to stick as well. So at the end, I've popped those bigger um, pearls on there and a couple of the little love hearts and stuff as well. And there you go. It's as easy as that. Um, if you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe and um make sure you take those notifications so that you get the notifications of new videos if you've got ideas or things that you'd like to see me do please pop them in the comments and i'll try and get to them um coming up with the ideas is probably the hardest part of this is oh what shall i do um i always take my photos on a white background if that helps the little sprinkles um give the extra dimension as well um and things like that but yeah um, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to follow my socials. They're all linked below and all the items I used are also linked below. Thanks. Bye.